You're watching The Agenda. We take you to Cape Town now where the Department of Health and Department of Science and Innovation will lead a European Commission delegation on a tour to the country's vaccine manufacturing plants in Cape Town. The Commission will assess progress made regarding locally produced pharmaceutical products. This is to enable the country and the continent of Africa to rapidly respond to morbidity and mortality. Let's bring in SABC News reporter Atule Joka who's on the story for us. Atule, thank you so much for your time. So take us through the program for this morning. Hello, warm greetings to you, Mkholis, and a warm welcome to SABC News viewers. Uh, the program started very early uh, with the media breakfast, where the European delegation, together with the Department of Health uh, delegates, and also from the Science and, and Innovation, sat down around the table to discuss some issues around the administration and production, and also the distribution of vaccines in the country. And then they moved over to these vaccine manufacturing plants to check over the progress. Uh, Mkholis, you would remember about two years uh, ago, there was this devastating uh, COVID-19 pandemic which stepped through uh, around the world and also affected South Africa. Uh, millions of people were affected. Uh, over millions of vaccines were also administered uh, throughout the country. And then a decision was taken that a vaccine manufacturing plant that will ensure that there is design, there is innovation and manufacturing of vaccines from South Africa will be done here was taken uh, in 2021. Uh, this particular uh, facility was developed. So they came here with that um, European delegation to show them this facility and the progress and also some challenges are surrounding that. But I do have the Deputy Minister of the Department of Health, Dr. Sibundi Seni Lomo. Dr. Thank you so much for your time. Just talk to us about today's proceedings and also uh, you hosting that European delegation. Just what was that uh, about and also what sort of um, challenges did you see? Um, just all the processes that you took them through this morning. No, thank you very much for this opportunity. <laughs> you recall that uh, in the 20, 21st of June 2021, our president, President Ramaphosa, announced this uh, space of Afrigen and uh, the, the, our efforts uh, as a country, as a continent, to do the manufacturing. Now, it was quite exciting as we landed here in Afrigen uh, to learn that the first vaccine that they've produced, they are going to call it Afrigen 2121 in recognition and in thanking the president for taking the strides. Now, what this is actually saying to us is that as a continent, as a country, we're not always going to be at the back of the queue. Uh, having learned from uh, uh, the pandemic of uh, COVID, you will recall that our president was a chair, at the height of COVID, was a chair of the AU. And uh, in the wisdom of the AU, they then announced that our president was going to remain as a um, a, a, a champion, an AU champion for COVID-19. Now we are saying we see our president bigger and better than just being a COVID-19 champion because this is creating a platform to really develop any other future emerging pandemics in the world and this is going to be our platform. Now once this is actually strong as we see it, we are not going to be at the back of the queue, we are not going to rely on that country, that uh, area producing for us but we are excited that European Union was here we were actually embracing them here coming into our shores to come and witness the progress that we are making and we want to thank them really for the support that they've given to us financially and the technical expertise but also thank the WHO therefore actually identifying this as one of the hub in the world that could actually be a hub for mRNA vaccine uh, producing also the European Union team, how involved were they? I understand they also had a financial role to play in the establishment of this facility and also what did they maybe seek out of this? Look, I think uh, it's a solidarity issue in the world uh, and uh, I think what inspired them is to actually like the lessons that they saw and many countries like here they were also ambassadors from uh, Firstly, there was an EU ambassador, Sandra, leading, supporting um, uh, Commissioner uh, Stella. But there were also ambassadors there coming in from Germany, uh, Belgium, and France. All of them, in some way, have contributed, made financial contributions. I think there's been a decision taken in EU that they need to form strong partnership with us, and we're grateful about that. And therefore, they also want to see this going stronger. I don't think there's any ulterior motive for them being part of us. It's that solidarity in the world and that 
plight that they saw in Africa where health did not become a public good for the rest of us in Africa. We had to be at the back of the queue in terms of accessing. So I, I think it's just a morality issue, a solidarity issue to strengthen uh, this issue of universal health care for all citizens in the world. And also, Doctor, this, there's this, this question that kept coming today uh, about these facilities. Um, how are you seeing the, the demand and, and vessels supply in these facilities? I understand there was also another one in Port Elizabeth. If you can give us an update as to the capacity that you have, how much vaccines are you producing, and also if there is still demand, because some people think uh, it, we are past COVID-19 and maybe not so many people and longer um, require these vaccines. If you can just um, take up to speak. Look, uh, besides COVID, in the country we give immunizations to children at birth. And 90% of immunizations in the country are imports, not manufacture. So the starting point is to, even if there were not to be COVID, and even if there were not to be any future pandemics, we need it for the whole of Africa, for our own resource. Mises must have a vaccine. We are actually immunizing against the rubella. We are immunizing against the TB. And we, might, we, we import all those. So if anyone were to think that there is no space, there is. Large, for us, it will create stability. It will make us less vulnerable. We will not have to wait for uh, these uh, intellectual property rights of other countries to manufacture. We will create in our country. So, yes, the incident of Kebeka is something that we need to improve on, where we as South Africa must actually be buying and using those uh, 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 vaccines. But also the whole, uh, not only the whole continent, but the whole world should now know that there is this uh, vaccine available and there is this manufacturing plant in Kebeka and there's the one here that we are also starting in Cape Town like many more. So the issues of uh, vaccines is a lifelong but probably not only for uh, human beings also for animals. There is need to all the protection for animals and vaccination for animals. We also import to get vaccines into our country. Before I let you go, Doctor, um, just coming back to COVID-19, I see it has sprung up in other parts of the world. How are we doing in South Africa? Uh, should we take caution? Just if you can just update us. Yeah, no, the last briefing that we did, led by the minister about uh, three weeks ago, was saying we don't have a new strain as yet in our country. We have the circulating strain, even what you see in other countries, what we already have experienced. So if you have had a vaccine on your body, we are encouraging you to go for a booster. Uh, we are led by our scientists who continue to advise us, in the absence of a new strain, of a new variant, we are still relatively okay and safe if we are vaccinated, if we have taken boosters uh, and re-boosters. So there has just been people of my age, 50 years and above, who have had two doses of a, a vaccine you must get two more other boosters and then the younger generation above 18 years must have an additional booster. So we need that because that is going to create a stability. We would know we don't want to go back ever to have uh, lockdowns in the country. You remember the lockdowns were just because we did not have vaccines. Now that we have vaccines, we're requesting South Africans to come forward. They must take vaccines and then get boosters and then we are fine because we don't have a new variant as yet. Dr. Lomo, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Well, that was Dr. Lomo, Deputy Minister of the Department of Health in South Africa, just explaining to us about uh, his meeting with the delegation from uh, Europe. Um, what came out of this meeting was the fact that um, vaccines, uh, viruses are a global crisis and they need uh, global solutions. So they came together in trying to make sure uh, that they develop these plants and um, because now the supply is down, they are saying they still need for these particular uh, manufacturing plants because um, uh, because the vaccines will not only be administered for COVID-19 vaccines, there are various other... Uh, I, I want to bring in uh, Petro Tablanche and Claudia, I, I see her walking away. I just want... Okay, I, I, ju I, ju I just wanted to check with her. Just one more question with Petro Tablanche, um, Managing Director of this facility. Petro, you were talking to us about uh, the vaccine that you've developed here. You have a name now. Just talk to us about that quickly. So the vaccine developed here at Acrigen, which is the COVID-19 vaccine that we will test in a booster trial, is called AfriVac 
2021, and the name comes from the day 21st of June 2021, where uh, President Ramaphosa and Dr. Tedros uh, announced the start of this project here, this global vaccine development project. When are you launching it? We will launch it in April. We are looking at a date for the f final launch of this facility. How far is it now? Which phase is it? In? We are 95% facility, facility completed. The vaccine is already in pre-clinical development and we plan to do the clinical trial in September 2023 this year in South Africa, working with the South African Medical Research Council and the Desmond Tutu Institute. Thank you so much. That was Petro Teblanj, Managing Director of this facility in Kloliza, talking us about um, the vaccine that is produced here in South Africa. And the name will be AFRI 2121. It's on pre-trial clinic and it will be launched in September and um, be delivered in April next year. From myself, Atule Joga, my colleague Lukanyo Mazanzana. Back to you. Right, Atule Joka on the pulse of that story for us, as well as bringing us some of the conversations there around COVID-19 vaccines. Thanks indeed for your time.